Thank you for joining us. This is Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I'm Ruth Aguela. To effectively implement federal government's plan of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty, the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development has launched its 2021-2025 Strategic Roadmap. Now, the event, which had relevant stakeholders in attendance, is to achieve a more resolute response by engaging partners towards sustaining humanitarian interventions in the country. Another giant step taken on a walk to free many from the shackles of poverty. It has been a journey of deliberate efforts in restoring dignity to humanity by reaching out to the poor and vulnerable in the country. In sustaining these efforts, the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development unveils a strategic roadmap covering 2021 to 2025 anchoring on seven strategic pillars towards achieving an improved response on humanitarian interventions. These stakeholders are lending their voices in solidarity towards achieving the great course. As much as this administration is noted for the infrastructural development, it's also noted for what it has done in terms of catering and caring for for those who are vulnerable among us. All of this effort needs funding in one, one way or the other. So we must look at how to optimize the limited funds that we have that we're able to avail to the ministry and its agencies. We must make sure that whatever we're doing, we're getting real value for the money. We are prepared at all times to collaborate with you and to work with you to ensure that you succeed in your mandate. Some of these things people in the state do not know. Because it's when you are doing these things, let us know so that we can tell people the work you are doing. The roadmap also introduces implementation, monitoring, evaluation, review and reporting mechanisms that will be deployed to ensure effective results delivery. The full implementation of the strategic trust and roadmap while consolidating the priority areas of the federal government will also guide us towards achieving the mandate of the ministry. In a message, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, says the federal government will put its full weight to actualize the project. One of our core priorities has been the dignity and social security of all Nigerians. This commitment is rooted in our belief that no Nigerian should be left behind in our nation's march to the future. A new done for Nigerians, a clear demonstration of restoring hope and dignity, a strategic roadmap intended to map out a life of dignity for all. In a the European Union has announced 820 million euro digital economy package for Nigeria. Nigeria's Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, while receiving a delegation of the European Commission led by its Executive Vice President, Margrethe Vestager, regards the gesture as a relief that the European Union supports the view conversed by Nigeria that gas be considered a transition fuel as the global community moves towards net zero emissions target. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency has declared suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police, DCP Abakiari, wanted for aiding and abating of drug traffickers and engaging in illicit drug business. NDLEA correspondent Abdul Malik Hassan will tell us more. NDLEA says the former commander of the intelligence response team of the Nigeria Police Force 
DCP Abakari is a member of a drug cartel that operates the Brazil Ethiopia Nigeria illicit drug pipeline. Unfortunately, some law enforcement agents who should be partners in the pursuit of the president's mandate are at the forefront of breaking the law as they aid and abet drug trafficking in the country. Today, we are forced to declare one of such law enforcement agents wanted. The saga started the on the 1st of January 2022, investigations revealed that the suspended security agent initiated a call to one of the NDLA officers in Abuja and informing him of some intercepted drug traffickers with 25 kilograms of cocaine with a proposal for him and his team to take 15 kilograms of the cocaine and 10 kilograms for the prosecution of the suspects. One the problem cocaine be replaced with a dummy worth 15 kilograms. He then offered to pay the NDLA team, that is the officer and the FCT commander, by selling on their behalf half of the remaining 10 kilograms, thereby further reducing the original cocaine from the prosecution to just 5 kilograms. At 7 million per kilogram... DCP Abakari also offered to share the money incurred from the sale of the cocaine, amounting to a total of $61,400. But little did he know the vehicle was taped. NDLEA says the suspects and drugs have been delivered to them, while Abakari declared wanted for failure to respond to the agency's call for debriefing. Abdul Malik Hassan, NTA News. National Executive Committee and Council of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria is working out modalities to invigorate the industry and address contemporary pharmaceutical challenges in Nigeria. This was the major focus of discussion during investiture and inauguration of new executives of the society in Abuja. Charles Afer reports. I have the privilege to be able to transfer this power to you. An era climaxed with the transfer of the mantle of leadership from the outgoing to the incoming national executive to spearhead the next phase of the society. Apply yourself to the job and achieve reasonable self-sufficiency in drug production while also striving to get rid of fake and expired drugs out of the reach of the younger generation were some of the recommendations to the new executive. We're working on the new pharmacy law, which we got at least to the point where it is in the presidency waiting for approval. And I'm sure my successors will follow through to see that the new pharmacy act becomes law. Uh, medicine security is very important. If you don't have medicine and there's crisis like what happened during the COVID era, we could be in trouble. Pharmacies are very relevant and they will educate the public on appropriate use of medicine. And that's what we term pharmaceutical care. In addition, we also want to make, let the public know that pharmacies are relevant in the society and they will be responsible in providing necessary duration as drug expert. Deserving members of the society were honored as fellows for their meritorious services to the professional body. Minister of Health Osage Hanire, Minister of Works Babatunde Raji Fashola and other notable personalities attended the investiture. Charles Alpha, NTN News. Have you perhaps taken out time to get primary school pupils and secondary school students to read to you? Well, Anne Jibono did just that and their performance inspires her story. In case of returning killing suspect to be carried out by Yahoo Boys as well as kidnappers and other criminal 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 activities plateau state governor. Because of radical killing suspected to be carried out by Yoruba uh, Yahoo Boy. I am as shocked as you are. And this confirms the outcry of concerned persons in the country. The World Culture Scorecard Index rates Nigeria as one of the countries with the lowest reading culture globally. The National Commission for Mass Literacy, Adult and Non-Formal Education also says four in ten primary school pupils cannot read. Lack of reading materials, poor training. Some teachers will most tell us how to teach. 
calories. Which is also the same background factor. And if you can't read, you who are teaching, then how do you expect their products to go to read? Some have attributed this challenge to lack of functional libraries in schools and low patronage of these libraries. Um, no, I don't use the library because I just don't know. I don't have a reason. I, I do not make use of the library because I prefer reading in the class. So it's a matter of priority. If good reading habit is not inculcated in students, they will not make any headway in the academies. We, have, we are the only country that have branches of national library to make sure that reading materials get to the grassroots. Then we are proposing what we call literacy through economic empowerment. As you are reading and writing here, we, you must acquire a skill here and we'll equip you with starter packs or kits. A school of thought explains that there is a link between poverty and inability to read. They seek a campaign for compulsory use of libraries in schools. If a school decides to include library periods like we had, when I was in secondary school, we have something like library period, where a student is supposed to be in the library one hour of every day. So later on, they change it to three days, that's three hours in every week. Just go there, spend some hours, go through books, do, do your researches. We are taught not to use only what the teacher taught you in the class. Many thoughts arise when a student or people cannot read. How can they contribute to the society after graduation? Are they to take reading classes again to make up for what they did not learn? More questions than answers seem to fill my mind as we wait for solutions. In Abuja and Jibuno, NT News. Thank you, Anne. For that, Minister of Education Adamu Adamu says the academic staff union of University Yasu embarked on industrial action without intimating the ministry. In a statement by the Director of Press, Ministry of Education, Mr. Bem Gum, said the ministry only heard, like any other Nigerian, that the union has embarked on four weeks one in strike. It added that the ministry's doors are always open for discussion, but no such avenue has been explored by the union. We're heading to Lagos now to join Michael. He's going to pick up from there. Michael. Thank you, Ruth. The four weeks warning strike declared by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has taken immediate effect. Hing No John Adams reports that the decision to down tools was reached after two days' deliberations by the National Executive Council of the Union in Lagos. These students are trying to grapple with the reality of another strike as lectures have been halted for the next four weeks since ASU says there is no going back. President of the association says though the union members are not happy that students will lose some weeks, the industrial action is a means of pressing home their long overdue demands, which are in the interest of tertiary education in Nigeria. Some of their demands are the implementation of MOA and MOU by the federal government, deployment of university transparency accountability solutions, payment of earned academic allowance to members of ASU OAU, and stoppage of victimization of academics in state universities, among others. So those are the issues. When we went to go on strike in November, NIREC interceded. And we, we gave them the opportunity. But between then and now, we will never have any formal invitation from any government agency, either for a meeting or what they intend to do. Till now. Students and parents are hoping that government and ASU will come to a compromise as soon as possible for academic activities to continue. In Lagos, Hingino John Adams, NTA News. The Joint National Assembly Committee on Aviation has tasked the airport community to improve on the deployment of technology for the security of lives and infrastructure. This, the committee said, is imperative to create safe and friendly environments capable of attracting more investment into the country. 
The dark cloud that once eclipsed the aviation industry globally due to the impact of COVID-19 is gradually easing, giving way for stable and consistent rebound. Passengers' traffic at the Mutala Mohammed International Airport is presently put at 56% of pre-COVID-19 era, and the interest behind the inspection of facilities by the Joint Committee of the National Assembly on Aviation is to fast track the recovery process. The Chairman Senate Committee on Aviation commended all the agencies within the industry for driving growth in spite of the pandemic, but noted that the task ahead is to meet up with modern day demands. This airport is a town of its own, and it will not be enough to assume that having 1,500 men will be enough to police this airport. We must be looking at improving and expanding by using modern day facilities to, to make sure that we secure the airport. The new terminal at the Motala Mohammed International Airport is at 89% completion and should be inaugurated in March. But the Chairman House Committee on Aviation, Inolim Naji, wants the date to be earlier because the Lagos Airport alone accounts for 60 to 65% of air passengers' traffic in Nigeria. We need that, that airport to open tomorrow because Lagos Airport is the engine room of all the airports in Nigeria. So I don't see why Potako to be open. Kano will be open, Abuja will be open, and the engine room will not open. Why commending the National Assembly for passing the six aviation bills before it, mm -hmm. the managing director of the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria, FAN, made a case for improved funding. And the most important ones are the financial decisions. If we are all treated in tandem as a system, then any financial decision that is Leave it on one will impact on the other tremendously. Projects within the airport were later inspected, including a new terminal where members disclosed prospect for its viability. Don't forget that you can follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on YouTube at NTA2 on, at NTA News rather online. You can also visit our Facebook page at NTA Network News, Twitter handle at NTA News Now and on Instagram at NTA Network for updates. Uh, time now for a break and when we return, Nationwide will continue with Ruth in Abuja. Please stay. Welcome back. Let's take you back to the report we called earlier on the European Union announcing 820 million euro digital economy package for Nigeria, while the Vice President, Professor Yami Oshibajo, was receiving a delegation of the European Commission. Let's get details from Jite Unifari. We are relieved to hear of the European Union support on gas as a transition fuel, says Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo, after hearing the pronouncement by the visiting Executive Vice President of the European Union. Nigeria has been in the forefront of the international advocacy on the issue, and the Vice President has spoken and written about it in different international fora. Issues discussed at this meeting include the use of digital technology, trade and investment, the importance of the energy relationship between Nigeria and the European Union also featured, while a consideration of all options for increased supply of liquefied natural gas from Nigeria to the European Union was agreed to. The European Union Commission's Executive Vice President informed Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo on the announcement by President of the Commission of a Global Gateway Africa-Europe investment package worth 150 billion euros. She announced an EU digital economy package of at least 820 million euros until 2024. The package will help enhance secure connectivity, digitalize public services, support entrepreneurship, and build digital skills while developing a human-centric democratic governance framework for technology. In terms of a renewed Nigeria-EU partnership was noted during the meeting, including expectations for a successful European Union-African Union Summit in Brussels coming up on the 17th and 18th of February 2022. In the State House, Jude Unifade, NT News. 
The federal government has charged radio stations in the country to uphold the trust of their listeners by shunning fake news and ensuring that only credible and factual information is relayed through their medium. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed gave the charge in a statement signed by Shagun Adeyemi, special assistant to the president of media, Office of the Minister to mark the 2022 World Radio Day, which is observed every year on February 15th, to highlight the importance and relevance of radio. With reference to the theme of the 2022 World Radio Day celebration, which is radio and trust, the minister said radio stations in the country must continue to work hard to maintain the trust of their listeners, adding that in spite of the widespread use of social media and other mass communication platforms, radio remains one of the most trusted and accessible medium in the world, especially because of its unparalleled connection to the grassroots. Lai Mohammed said the theme of this year's celebration is both apt and timely. As the nation moves closer to another general elections, urging all radio broadcasters to leverage on the trust the listeners have in the medium to educate and sensitize the citizenry on their roles and responsibilities in electing the right persons to serve at the various levels of government. He noted that some of the concepts to be discussed as sub-themes center around the need to keep the medium credible, engaging and receptive to new broadcast ideas while creating better opportunities for income generation and profit. On the part of the federal government, Lai Mohammed reiterated that government will continue to pursue right policies, give required support, as well as provide the enabling environment for the growth and successful operation of radio stations in Nigeria. All right, our next stop will be Sokoto. Well, welcome to Sokoto. Thank you for joining us. Sultan of Sokoto, Mohammed Saad Abubakar, has called for wider consultations and engagements by all stakeholders to get Nigerians convinced to accept the COVID-19 vaccination he was speaking while receiving the Executive Director and National Primary Health Care Development Agency, Dr. Faisal Shuaib, and officials of UNICEF and WHO on courtesy visit at his palace. Sheikh Mohammed Deti reports. This is not the first time the Sultan is receiving these officials at the palace, and this time they are at the palace to solicit for the Sultan's support to send the Nigerians on the efficacy of COVID-19 vaccine to enable the country meet the target of 1,412,113, the 15% of the eligible population needed to be vaccinated against the pandemic before the end of March this year in Sokoto State. Dr. Professor Shaib informed the Sultan that, despite successes recorded in the fight against poliomyelitis, Sokoto is identified as amongst the low performing states in COVID 19 vaccine uptake. The advocacy visit by the officials also called for more engagement of the traditional institutions to meet the target. So a state like Sokoto State, I'll have to double check, will need to uh, vaccinate uh, at least 15,000 people every single day to be able to reach uh, those numbers. We are confident that with the leadership in this particular in Sokoto, we are going to make it happen. Sokoto has a lot of room to improve in vaccination of COVID-19. Sultan Mohammed Saad Abubakar advocated for a strong engagement of stakeholders during the sensation. The Sultan called for more concerted efforts towards alleviating the sufferings of the masses to achieve the target objective. People must know the yes, there is medicine. The Islam allows us to take medicine as a precaution for to get well when we are sick. So nobody should say I won't take medicine because that said I shouldn't take medicine. No. During the visit, the Sultan was presented with an award of excellence for his sustained support to primary health care development in Nigeria. In Sakwatu, Shio Muhammad Dati, NTA News.
Kenya State Government has indicated interest to enter into bilateral trade cooperation with Pakistan authorities on agriculture, education, healthcare, and commerce as deliberate efforts to move the state forward. Governor Wakar Atiku Bagudu indicated this when he received the Pakistani High Commissioner to Nigeria, Major General Mohammed Tayyib Azam, who called on him at the government house, Benin Kebi. Usman Abdullahi Shehu reports. Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu appreciated the Pakistani High Commissioner in including Kebi State as part of the trade cooperation and entrepreneurship, pledging to sustain bilateral ties through the Standing Committee to supervise and coordinate the possibility. The Governor requested the Commissioner to look into the possibility of partnering with the state on cancer treatment, mining, technology, healthcare services, security, environment, education and agriculture, among other areas. So what we will ensure that we do, will focus on those opportunities that will boost trade between Pakistan and Nigeria and also help us to cooperate so that we participate in some places in the world market together. Earlier, the Pakistan High Commissioner to Nigeria, Muhammad Tayyab Azam, said he was in the state to explore areas of cooperation on trade and commerce for the benefit of the two entities. He listed security, engineering, pharmaceutical, education, health, and hospital equipment among the possible areas for cooperation. And my that effort would be that at least everyone knows where Pakistan is and the, what kind of relationship we had in the past and what potential we have to further enhance this uh, relationship between the two countries. Swan Abdullah Hishehu, NTA News. You can follow this news broadcast live on our website, nta.ng slash live, and on our YouTube channel, NTA News Online. You can also visit our Twitter at NTA News Now, and also our Facebook page, NTA Network News, and Instagram, NTA Network, Network Updates. That's it for us here in Sokoto. It's bye for now. Thank you very much, Nana. A magistrate court sitting in Akura, Ondo State, this Monday sentenced the woman, Okwayami Omoyemi, to three and a half years imprisonment for brutalizing a 12-year-old boy, Joel Sunday, who was serving as her housemate. The convict was arrested by the police after she inflicted multiple injuries on the body of the victim for allegedly taking a piece of meat from her port. Doris Olumoko will tell us all about it. This viral video shows a 12-year-old boy crying with marks on his body, which indicated that his body was lacerated with razor blade. This prompted concerned individuals and relevant authorities to swing into action, leading to the arrest and arraignment of the 36-year-old woman before the court on a five-count charge bothering on attempted murder, child abuse, violence against persons prohibition, among others. In her judgment, the magistrate, Mrs. Olufumilayo Edwin, said the defendant is guilty of count one, four, and five. The sentence has passed. The judgment today is going to serve as a deterrent, and this is a positive way forward for us as fighters for women and children's rights. The magistrate is fair, going by what has happened, but we do the need for the appropriate time. I'm using my entire fiber to say that this kind of cruelty will never be tolerated in our state. And we're also um, assuring our children we will protect them like mother. More facts are emerging on the circumstances that led the brutalized boy, Joel Sunday, and his 10-year-old sister to leave their abroad Zulu in Kebi State. Their father, Dan Ladi Sunday, who spoke in Hausa dialect, explained that situation in his area made him seek assistance for his children, only for them to fall victim of child abuse. In Akure, Doris Ulumoko, NTA News. We apologize for the disturbing clip in that report. The National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, is collaborating with security agencies to address the increasing rate of human trafficking. Dr. Fatima Waziri, the Director General of NAPTIP, is seeking the support of the Nigerian Army in this regard as she visits the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya. 
trafficking in persons for human organs has become the most trending aspect of human trafficking. Over the years, we've enjoyed regular trainings on SISC at um, DIC in Cairo. I'll crave your indulgence if we can get more opportunities to get different kind of trainings. So any kind of capacity building, especially for our investigators, we have an intelligent and international cooperation unit. If we can get capacity building for them. We are always willing to support. I'm happy that you identify the need to corroborate and liars with other agencies. And now we are ready to provide our own support. I would encourage you also to reach out to all other agencies, including. I believe you also have your own, probably, statistics or mapping, yes. and know areas where this thing are prevalent, yes. and now emphasize those. And sometimes we can even have some uh, that will shock or discussion, whatever, and map out what other strategies we can. The agency has so far secured 500 convictions since inception. In an effort to reduce the effect of human trafficking in the country, the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons has taken its campaign to Koma community in Adamo State to sensitize and enlighten the people on the dangers of human trafficking. Simon Asher reports that Koma community over the years have fallen victim to human trafficking that necessitated a visit by NAPTIP to the area. Koma, in the local government area of Adama State, the area is bedeviled with the millions of child trafficking since 1990, with tens of hundred children, especially female, taken due to the vulnerability of the communities who are easily brainwashed by the traffickers for a better life of their words away from home. More often for the Koma people, it ends in tears as Naibla Yunusa, a 28-year-old woman and a mother of one, among other members of the community said, the situation is pathetic due to the devastating effect of the unwholesome act. I know of 36 children, including my niece, taken from our community. The thing is very rampant. And uh, the problem is that we are, they are deceiving us that these children they are taking away, they are going to school. Mindful of this, the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, in conjunction with First Step, where the community to enlighten and sensitize the people of the dangers and the way out. We are currently having uh, three cases pending in Federal High Court in Yola, and all the victims, they are from this community. That's what they set us to come and uh, have a serious sensitization in this community, which we hope is going to go a long way in uh, reducing the, um, the trafficking of humans in this community. The district head of Koma, Dr. Jalo Hamanjalo Abba, commended NAPTIP for their efforts, saying the advocacy will not have come at a time better than now. You go to the grassroots and educate us, and I think by doing that, the pro this problem will be reduced. With this enlightenment campaign, it is expected that the people of Koma will be better equipped on the menace of human trafficking. In Yola, Simon Asher, NT News. All right, we're taking another trip this time to Ibadan as we join Larry. Larry. Good to see you, Ruth, and welcome to Ibadan. For Nigeria to overcome the increasing rate of cardiovascular and health-related deaths, open-heart surgical centers need to be urgently established. This was the view of a thoracic and cardiovascular surgery expert, Professor Peter Adeoye. Aisha Abubakar Yahaya has details. Heart is literally the that drives other organs in the body. And when it bleeds or stops working, the life of a man is either in danger or ends immediately. Hence, the need for urgent and coordinated efforts in the management of cardiovascular and heart-related diseases, which is said to be responsible for one-third of nearly half a million non-communicable disease deaths in Nigeria annually. With a passion to finding solutions to this disturbing trend, Professor Peter Adioe, while delivering the 216th inaugural lecture of the University of Illinois, unveiled new frontiers for cardiothoracic surgery and cancer management in Nigeria. Surgery is a technology-driven field. 
The global trend has been towards minimally invasive surgery, transcatheter technique, telemanipulation instrumentation, and what is so With the theme of the inaugural lecture, battling to keep our hearts safe, who will heal the bleeding hearts? Aisha Abubakar Yahaya, NTA News. Given moral and moral, physical and social support to people living with sickle cell disease, live a meaningful life and fight these genetic disorders. Correspondent Rafia Anima Shan Badmos reports that a title faces member of a sickle cell Amazon has been presented by Dr. Miriam Lawa living with sickle cell anemia as a way of tackling the disease. Sickle cell anemia patients explain that the disease makes life difficult, particularly for a child who would need to deal with stunted growth and delayed sexual maturity. For Dr. Mariam Lawal, a pharmacist living with sickle cell anemia, crisis started at age five and up till now at 44 years. Hence, the motive behind the book titled Faces, Memoirs of a Sickle Cell Amazon, to share the experience of a life as a sickle cell warrior to serve as a source of inspiration to others. and the reviewer of the book called Government and Well Meaning Nigerians to provide sophisticated equipment to help in treatment of the disease. It's a book also to encourage warriors, that is people who are living with sickle cell disease. The men there, they should give all care, not even the, the wives that are having this challenge, but all women, their wives, they should always encourage them and give them their necessary support. The 111-page book was unveiled and presented for the use of the general public in Ibadan. Rofia and Mashan Badmos, NTA News. In Abuja Studios with Ruth. After this break, stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back. Head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Fulasha De Yemieson, says she's impressed with the number of civil servants participating at the Course 15 of the National Institute for Security Studies. She expressed this when the study team paid her a cutsy visit in Abuja. Civil servants being the engine room of the government, the head of service recalled their role in policy implementation, so they need special recognition on training and retraining, she noted. Global climate challenge prospects priorities for economic development and conflict resolution in Africa is the theme of the study. And the head of the civil service of the Federation says this is apt considering the contemporary security challenges on the African continent. Voices were louder at a national orientation agency calling on citizens to rekindle zeal for patriotism and love for the fatherland. As Nigeria joins the rest of the world to mark Valentine's Day, Kenneth Nanim reports. Just as for themed February every year is set aside to celebrate St. Valentine, whose character demonstrated sacrifice and true love, the National Orientation Agency had also set up integrity clubs in over 2,000 schools nationwide. The essence is to groom young Nigerians into true patriots who will at all costs uphold the national core values that unite the country. And falling in love with Nigeria is the subject matter to drive the campaign. Our country is known for its beautiful stories of love, of unity, and the respect for each other. We cannot afford to fritter away the dividends of the labels of our heroes past because of our newfound tendency for sectionalism and the parochial interests. As the agency rewards excellence among students who distinguish themselves in a debate competition on a number of topics including fight against corruption, courtesy, drug abuse and sexual harassment across the states, the theme fall in love with Nigeria becomes clearer. Every student has had a role to play in making Nigeria a better place. If this uh, potential is misguided, and abused, 
by disgruntled elements in society, the youth are capable of being used for negative tendencies. They fall in love with Nigeria, the agency says, is another clear and call to all citizens to serve the fatherland in faithfulness, in honesty and loyalty, as well as to defend her unity, as indicated in the stanza of the National Pledge. Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. The Federal Road Safety Corps has put in place all measures to ensure safety of road users during the Valentine's Day celebration, as it wants road users to desist from indulging in drunk driving, avoid excessive speeding, and resist the temptation to drive recklessly so as to mitigate all incidences of road traffic crashes during the celebration. The court martial, Dr. Boboye Oyemi, to this end, has directed commanding officers across board to double their efforts efforts by ensuring massive deployment of officers and men for enhanced visibility, adequate traffic control and maximum enforcement of all COVID-19 protocols, amongst others. We're heading to Meduguri now to join Abu Bakr. The state government has reopened two secondary schools in Burma local government area after eight years closure due to insurgency and its ongoing transformation in the education sector. The schools are Government Day Secondary School and Government Girls Secondary School Burma, which was attended by the show of Burma and personalities from within and outside the local government. Here are more details of the story. Commenting on the reopening of Government Day Secondary School Burma, as well as Government Girls Secondary School Burma, Commissioner for Education, Engineer Lawan Abu Wakilibi said the development followed a directive by Governor Babagana Umara, while the Ministry on its part has posted principals and teachers to the institutions in addition to equipping them with state-of-the-art facilities. Government, the Commissioner further explained, has restored free bus services and one meal to be served daily in the two reopened institutions, while 300 bicycles have been distributed to SS1 and two students of Government Day Secondary School, Burma, to ensure sustainability in going to school. While announcing the intention of the state government to reopen Government Secondary School, Kumshi, to operate in Banki Town, Engineer Wakilbi, however, said if the population of the inhabitants of Burma reaches 1,000 against the current number of 600, the present administration will reopen Technical School Burma and thank the Ministry of RRR for rehabilitating Government Secondary School Burma as expected. Show of Burma, Umar Ibn Kari El Kenemi, acknowledged Governor Zulum's giant strides in every facet of development and called on his subjects to reciprocate government's effort by enrolling their children in school and shun the doctrines of Boko Haram insurgents. Commissioner for Information Babakura Abbajato said, as stakeholders of Burma, they will work towards boosting enrollment beyond expectations, while member representing Burma Central at the State Assembly, Bamala Sunoma, charged the students to pay greater attention to their studies and use the facilities given to them for the purpose meant. And back here in the state capital, workshop for clinical personnel of University of Meduguri Teaching Hospital with the theme, Public Service Code of Conduct, Medical Ethics and Legal Implementation as well as Clinical Audit has opened in Meduguri. The workshop was organized by the University of Meduguri Teaching Hospital. Memuna Garba will now tell us more. This is the first workshop on ethical issues and clinical audit for medical personnel organized to keep the staff up to date on current national issues. Chief Medical Director, University of Meduguri Teaching Hospital, Professor Ahmed Ahijo, had while declaring the event open say, whenever patients leave the comfort of their homes to the hospital, they need the best medical caregivers to attend to them and charge all heads of department to live up to expectations in discharging their responsibilities, as well as adhere to ethics of their profession, stressing that the massive infrastructural development existing in the hospital must be supported by the right staff and every worker must put on identification card for online attendance. At the back of our mind, whenever we see a patient, from the point of receiving that patient, we make sure that we give the best 
possible care that we can give at our own level. They should go the extra mile to see that the people who come to them, who are brought to them, are happy at least before they leave this place. Chairman Medical Advisory Committee Professor Mala Bukar Sandabi explained that it is important to come together from time to time, especially doctors of radiographic, radiologists and psychiatric on the profession and enjoin participants to work with enthusiasm towards improving ethics of the hospital and commended the chief medical director for organizing the workshop. The facilitator, Umar Ali, discussed extensively on the significance of code of conduct and medical ethics, which could be subject to termination of one's appointment and prohibit hawking in office and habitual late coming, among others. In my degree, Maimuna Garba, NTA News. And those are the latest stories at this time from Meduguri. Let us at this point return to Ruth in Abuja for more reports for us. Happy Valentine to you. Thank you very much, Abu Bakr. Nasarawa state government has developed a framework to address activities of illegal miners and plug revenue leakages in the sector. To further demonstrate government's commitment, a task force has been set up to clamp down on illegal miners. Issa Mohammed reports. It's among the state with the highest deposits of solid minerals in the country. However, this advantage is yet to fully translate to wealth because of illegal mining activities, most of whom are artisanal. These prompted the visit to such sites with a view to curtailing the unwholesome practice. The commissioner who expressed displeasure over what he saw gave the assurance that those found culpable will not be spared as the law will take its full course. What the government is trying to do now is to profile all the artisanal miners so that we have their data bank in the ministry with a view to checking their activities. Meanwhile, at the mining site at Udege, Nasarawa local government area owned by a Chinese company, the team expressed appreciation to the company for its professionalism and commitment to its corporate social responsibility, even as steps are being taken to reclaim affected lands. Representative of the mining company, Zhu Shen Welder, express appreciation to the government for taking steps to sanitize mining administration in the states. Uh, it's, it's improved. It's better than uh, some years ago. It's in a related development, the tax force on prohibition against deforestation intercepted trucks loaded with charcoal in Akwanga local government area. The suspects were subsequently handed over to the police for prosecution. In Lafia, I am Isam Hamad, NTA News. All right, let's take sports update. Handicap 7 Amina Wilfred is again the winner of the 23rd edition of IBB Ladies Open Championship held at the IBB Golf and Country Club Abuja, having returned 237 gross and net of 216 over three days to beat a closest rival, Handicap 8 Rachel Danjuma and eight others. The four-day event, which climaxed on Sunday, was attended by 180 ladies from 10 countries. For this big victory that God gave me, so it's not my power, but I thank God for everything. The defending champion really uh, took it back. It was a struggle, but she eventually she won it. We thank God that the trophy is being retained. After their victorious outing in Serbia, venue of the just-concluded FIBA Women's World Cup qualifiers, Nigeria women's senior basketball team, D Tigresses, will return to the country Tuesday to continue preparations. The African champions picked the World Cup tickets, beating France 67-65 and Mali 73-69 in the group marches. Going against France and getting that maximum win, maximum three points, and getting to make sure that they beat Mali um, fair and square, it was it was a good one. And um, kudos to the girls, they have done well. And action will resume in the 2021-2022 UEFA Champions League round of 16 on Tuesday. Mauricio Pochettino led Paris Saint-Germain host 13th time Real Madrid in France, while Sporting Lisbon welcome Manchester City. Manchester City do have a slight edge against Sporting Lisbon. I think they have a chance, a chance of making it to the next phase of the competition. On Wednesday, RB Salzburg will lock horns with Bayern Munich and Inter Milan face Liverpool in Italy. With sports update, Cynthia Ogun, NCN News. 
We're done, but before we go, let's remind you that you can catch all our news live and programs on our website, nta.ng forward slash live. On YouTube channel, we are NTA News Online. You can visit our Facebook page, NTA Network News, on Twitter at NTA News Now, and on Instagram, NTA Network, for all the updates. All right, let's also urge you not to relent in the fight against rape and rapists. I'm Ruth Aguile. Enjoy the rest of your day.